Um, this session is about studies um, and st how we use studies in the CRS. <coughs> the study module or the study modules are the next ones to be developed. So uh, some of it's underway, some of it's under discussion, uh, some of it uh, is hypothetical and some of it we need input on. So this session really isn't about telling you how to do things. It's more about you telling us how you want things done. Um, there'll be people within the room who work with studies uh, primarily and people who work with references primarily and don't care very much about studies. I don't think there's any real mileage in going over the relative merits of those approaches again, but we can do that if anybody wants to. Um, what I quite like to do is to just go through some of the features that we have that, that are around studies and maybe just talk a little bit about some of the discussions that we've been having um, with the, uh, well it's another committee but I don't know what it's called, um, the, the Studies in CRS Committee working group thing. Um, which I have to say has been very productive so far. We've only had one meeting, but it was the most productive one meeting we've ever had. It was very good. Um, and we got lots of ideas from the people who, uh, who work with studies. Um, and it turns out that we're all actually pretty much singing from the same hymn sheet. Um, there's some things that people, those people do slightly differently to the way we've implemented it in CRS, and that's fine. Uh, and there's some ideas that we hadn't even thought of to put into CRS, and that's fine too, so we can bring those in. So I think it, it's, it's working really well. Um, essentially, CRS is a study-based program. So w we regard uh, the study as the fundamental piece of information. CRSD regards the study as the fundamental piece of information. The study may well have one or more, well, I suppose zero or more, um, references attached to it. Um, and the references are the things that we've been dealing with this morning. You know, all of the stuff, the general day-to-day -day stuff, is largely around references. Um, but in the bigger picture, what we're really interested in, certainly when you get to the review stage, is the study. So um, in terms of data extraction, in terms of, of characteristics of studies, if that's it's in the name. You know, we're interested in what the study uh, is and, and has and, and looked at. We're not, we're not necessarily interested in the individual, individual component parts of that, so the, the individual references, although that's where we get the information from. So it's kind of a complex picture. Um, we use studies uh, in several ways. The one way I showed you this morning, which was getting studies into reviews through the tracking screen. So if you are working with a study, uh, then actually just dragging that study to a review is a lot easier than dragging 100 references to a review, or however many there are. Um, we use studies to do the kind of um, the kind of deduplication that we're interested in. So when we're matching studies up from reviews, there's a there's a, an algorithm that gets applied to say if we get a study from review one that has five references in it and we get a study from review two that has three references in it, but those three match exactly with three of the five in review one, then we say that's the same study. So that's how the matching works. Uh, it gets slightly more complicated where you have uh, some that match and some don't, some references that match and some don't. And it gets a little bit more complicated when you have one study that has one reference and another study that has 50 references. Is that the same study? Difficult, probably, but it might also match with several others as well. So the matching isn't um, isn't exact. It's pretty good. Um, it gets pretty close, but occasionally it makes mistakes, and that's where they can be corrected in CRS. Um, one of the things that uh, we were asked to look at, we, we had a workshop similar to this in, in Seoul, um, which was really good, and we, we've put a, a lot of the things that we talked about there into the development plan. Uh, one of the things we asked about was uh, how on earth do you, do you create a study? How do, how do you work with studies? Um, so I think it's worthwhile just just looking at that as a fundamental uh, fundamental part. And then the, the second thing that I want to look at is how you search for studies, because it's actually slightly different in the CRS than it used to be. Um, 
the, one of the key things that we need to bottom out, and, and, and the meeting in Seoul and the studies working committee group uh, has looked at is how we display studies, and in particular how we display listings of studies. Uh, we've got one listing in place that uh, came from an initial suggestion, actually from a working group, that I think we almost all agree now doesn't work. Uh, and in the session, the practical session, uh, we've got some alternatives that we'd like you to look at and, and give us some input on. So I think that's that's a useful thing to do. Um, okay, so uh, creating a study. Um, unless anybody really wants me to rehearse the why would you want to create a study argument, I'll take that as no. So creating a study. Uh, several ways to do it, two important ways to do it. One is the obvious way, you can click New Study up here at the top. So if you click New Study, it'll open up uh, a study screen um, with completely blank entries. Um, what you'll see at the moment is uh, all of the agreed study fields. So this is the standard study um, with no values in any of them. Uh, I, I guess people I guess you would create a study from scratch. I mean, that's that's probably you might do that. Um, I think you, you, you're probably more likely to find some references and want to create a reference, a study from a reference, rather than actually creating a study completely out of the blue. Or you might want to create one from clinicaltrials.gov record uh, or or something like that. Um, so let's not let's not bother creating. Um, I can't get out of it. So let's not bother creating one from there. So let's assume that we want to create, a, let's say we've found some references, um, 13 references, those references. So uh, not likely to be 13, but let's say I had found 13 uh, references uh, in, in this search, and I realized that they were all for the same study. Um, the easiest way to do it is click Add to Study. So if you click on Add to Study, you get the usual pullout that says, what do you want to do with this? So you can add the records to an existing study, or you can create a new study record. So let's actually just do that. Because there's multiple rec ref records, it hasn't suggested a study name for it. Oh, sorry, mul multiple reference records, it hasn't suggested a study name for it. Could pick the first one, uh, that's no more likely to be the right name for it than the second or the third or the fourth, because they're not in any particular order. So you have to give it a name. So to create the study, we do that. Um, uh, right, that was one of the, the things that I report. So what, what, this is new, as you can tell. Um, one of the bugs that I, I put in the system the other day was, it needs to say, I've created that study for you. So, down the bottom right one. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> did anybody notice it down the bottom right-hand corner? Okay, um, this is me proving a point. Okay, down the bottom right-hand corner, a little thing popped out and said, I've created your study called Dooley 2017. Do you remember that thing where they had the gorilla? Do you, did anybody yeah. see that? Yeah. But, okay, there's, there's a t two teams of basketball players. <laughs> but this, is, this is pertinent. Two teams of basketball players. And they're, all, they're, they're bouncing the balls up and down. It was on the telly. And so that has to be true. And they're bouncing the balls up and down. And you had to, the, the question was, okay, uh, how many times did the players in the blue shirts bounce the ball up and down? So they're bouncing the ball up and down like this, and everybody's going, oh, four, five, six. And a gorilla, or a man dressed as a gorilla, walks on and walks all around everybody like this, all the way around and goes, <laughs> and the television walks off again. And at the end of it, they said, uh, there was a bit more of extra stuff, but then they said, okay, so how many people uh, saw the gorilla? <laughs> and almost everybody said, what gorilla? No, I didn't see a gorilla. And I was one of the ones that did see it, and I was saying, no, there's a gorilla there. That's not, you know, and it was on the screen for like 30 seconds. Extraordinary. So, okay. <laughs> that, that is the gorilla message down at the bottom corner. Drives me frantic. Um, so we have, we have created that study. Okay, so the study's created. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is uh, from a folder. So that's uh, uh, pretty much the same thing. So if you've got records in a folder, which actually you might want to do that, you know, rather than just do a search, you might want to build up a set of records over time uh, that you think might all be t to the same study and then create a study at a later time. Uh, all you need to do in that case is uh, – yeah, sorry, I wasn't clicked on it. Uh, where is it? 
Dave. Sitting close in the top right. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah, no, okay, so you add to study, so same process in the top, top right. Yeah. If you have a single record, you can. Yeah, I was going to get out to that. Okay, so series of records, it's, it's all new, it'll be fine. <laughs> right, if on the other hand you've got a record that you want to create a study, a single record that you want to create a study from, then you can click down on the record itself, which is add to study. So what that will do is actually make more of a guess at what the study should be called. It's going to call it, copy that, it's leader, leader. Well, it doesn't matter. It's whatever it's called, 1998. Okay. So it'll either create that as a new study or you can add it to an existing study. So if you already have a study, uh, you can add it to that. That will add that record to the study. Look, that. Okay. <laughs> so now that's added. All right, that's it. Okay, so that's as far as we've got with, with adding with creating studies. So uh, we 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 do at the moment create studies from ct.gov records. So that is in place. So you can do that from the ct.gov screen, which is over here. Uh, well, we're not going to go through it today, but there's a tab there that'll search clinicaltrials.gov. Um, the, the the clinical trials module that's one of the next to be developed. Uh, is quite sophisticated and will populate quite a lot of the fields in the study from the study records. So that's actually going to be quite, take us much further than standalone. It's going to, it's going to populate uh, the records that we want uh, and also give you the opportunity uh, to, to store study fields that would normally come through the um, PICO annotator. So you should be able to see those when you use the PICO annotator to, to produce the, the correct PICO fields. If you want to search for a study, the way we've, I mean, this is something you might want to talk about in the, in the discussion. Um, the way CRS works at the moment is it searches on references um, because that's the way most people work. Um, you've got an option to say um, search on study. So we, at the moment, it include, I think it's the wrong word, but uh, so we're, we're including references only in the results, so, or studies only, or any record type. Um, so if you knew that you were always working on studies, then you could click um, studies only, and that would just, it's sticky, so it'll stay, stay set on that. So if I wanted to search for, uh, the, oh, what happened there? What happened there? Sorry, it's behind there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so if I wanted to search for uh, the one I just created, um, we can see that it's found Dooley, two studies. I've actually created two Dooley 2017 studies. So a question, should I be able to do that? Answer, not sure actually, because if they come in, when they come in from reviews, they come in with duplicate names. So what should we do about those for discussion? Um, it's a minefield. Okay, so that created that, um, we can see that um, that's the study that we created. Uh, we can see down in the links tab below that it's got these um, references associated with it, um, and it's got those because I've been playing with the Dooley 2017 studies. So that's the one that we created from. Um, I don't know which one. There was one. Of, that was the one that we created, and then we added one to it, so it's got 14 references associated with it. Um, I think all of that's fine. That, that gets us some way to seeing what we want to see. Um, you, you've, we, I'm not sure that people would want to work like that necessarily, but again, this is one of the things that we, we, we want feedback on. Um, another way to look at studies is to use uh, Layout 4, which is um, the, the study layout. Uh, we looked at this briefly this morning, but that gives you kind of a similar view. Uh, so we're, all this will do is actually leave, leave, if you've got screen real estate, it'll leave the search history and the folders tabs open as well, so you, you can drag things between those. So in this one, uh, we've got um, four, uh, three studies, uh, and we can we can filter the, the, the results of the references um, by the studies. So it just gives us a quick way of looking at those 
different studies, that one's got one reference in it. We can also um, see what reviews they're in. So using the reviews tab, it'll tell you that this Evans um, study appeared in this review um, in the included section. If it appeared in more than one review, it would list it there. It says included in this review, excluded from that review. Okay, so that's, again, that's uh, under development. Well, that's not under development. That's in place. That, that's usable at the moment. But uh, I don't think it, it gets you quite as far as you, as you want to be. If we um, just go back to, to layout three and look at um, some more studies, I think this is the more interesting set of displays and the ones where we'd really like uh, to get some input from people as to what's useful. This uh, is, okay, so let's make things bigger. So we're interested in this window at the moment. So let's just open up that window and see what we've got in it. This was the, one of the first suggestions as to how we might, might want to show um, studies in, uh, in, a, list, in, in a, a listing. Uh, and people were saying that they were interested in the study ID, which these all happen to be NCT studies by the looks of it. Uh, they were interested in the allocation concealment. Uh, they were interested in a bunch of other stuff, the masking. Uh, they were interested in the status of the study, so completed is what we pull from, um, from clinicaltrials.gov, and the interventions and the primary outcomes. Uh, and I think at the last workshop, we kind of got to the point where we, where we were saying that's fine, but actually you're kind of interested in different things for different purposes. So you're not necessarily going to find this a particularly useful way of viewing the record. It's, it's more like a citation view uh, than, a, than a, a table view. Um, and I think we've, we've got to the point where, where this is not terribly helpful, uh, except when you see it like that, it actually does look quite helpful. I quite like it like that. That's, that's quite useful. But when it's in a smaller window, it's really not that useful. Um, you, you, because I've, I've maximized it, of course, you're not seeing the, uh, the references, but the, uh, the references for each of these, these studies appears underneath here. So there are two references within that, that study. Uh, 